So pediatric orthopedic surgeries include a wide spectrum of disorders. At one end, you have this acute trauma surgery for like supracondylar humerus fracture, where you need to plan the correct technique of reduction, pin configuration, size, direction in order to get the perfect outcome. At the other end, we have such neglected trauma, a non-union lateral condyle fracture with cubitus valgus, where you need to plan regarding what is the magnitude of deformity and plan the site and type of osteotomy to get not only the union of the lat no, lateral condyle, but also to correct the deformity. We have certain congenital condition, a common one like CTV, where there are different treatment modalities and the planning for each is different. And the list is endless. We deal with child surgery, but it's not a child's play. We do need a better understanding. So the first principle is planning the correct surgical dose. Well, this concept is very well documented for surgeries of neuromuscular conditions like cerebral palsy in children. These children who have various degrees of spasticity, soft tissue contractures, bony deformities, need to be thoroughly evaluated clinically, supplemented with a three-dimensional gait analysis in order to plan the correct indication, the correct timing, and the correct magnitude of surgery in the form of single-event multilevel surgery. This concept applies to almost all pediatric conditions, like say a case of a young girl presenting with genu valgum. If her x-ray appears like A, which shows changes of rickets, I would not offer a surgical dose, but treat her with medical management. If she's a nine-year-old girl, I would do growth modulation surgery in the form of femur hemiepiphysiodesis to have a gradual correction of the deformity. If the same child comes a little later, close to skeletal maturity, I might, may have to do hemiepiphysiodesis in femur as well as in tibia. Whereas if this child is post-menarchal, I would have to offer her a corrective osteotomy. So the surgical dosing is the most important first step. We do are benefited by investigations like CT and MRI. But remember, in a child, you need to subject them to anesthesia and sedation for each investigation. So they have to be done only when indicated. For example, if we want to do any surgery for facial bar excision, we need magnetic resonance imaging and a facial mapping. For surgical decompression of osteoarticular infection, we will need the correct uh, approach and we need MRI imaging. Or for such complex trauma in adolescence, where we need to plan the correct method of treatment and reduction and fixation, and we need a CT scan. But in cases like lateral condyle fracture, you can very well take an oblique view or use arthrogram to decide and classify the fracture and plan the treatment. The third principle is, of course, a proper parental counseling. Many of our surgeries, we have to depend on intraoperative judgment for the dose of surgery. For example, in developmental dysplasia of the hip surgery, once we do an open reduction, whether the child will need an additional femoral osteotomy or an acetabular osteotomy depends on intraoperative stability of reduction. Some of them may need a prolonged evaluation later on, and at a later date, if the acetabulum does not develop well, they need a subsequent surgery. So all this sort of plan needs to be discussed with parents. Also, the need for post-operative casting or brace for optimum duration needs to be emphasized, and patients have to be, and the parents have to be informed about that. Otherwise, we land up in a situation like this, especially in growth modulation surgery, where the child of Janu Varam, treated with growth modulation eight plates, did not follow up, landed up with reverse deformity of Janu Valgum, and we had to take him up for second surgery, remove the plate from uh, opposite side and put it on the other side for now a uh, reverse deformity correction planning. Children are small patients, are very small, as Dr. Uh, Vikas Agashi showed in his first talk. Uh, these are challenging problems of osteogenesis imperfecta. They have fragile bones, narrow canal, presence of growth plates, multiplanar deformities. So remember, pediatric patients are not just K-wires in small plates. We also need a full armamentarium of instrumentation and uh, implants to make them straight. Positioning is very important. Remember, these are small children. The preoperative positioning, not only of the child, but the entire team needs to be planned in advance. Patient may have to be sometimes on the edge of the table in upper limb surgeries. You need to give traction, so they need to be supported well. For lower limb, you may place the patient on a fracture table or on a radiolysis ta uh, uh, table, but ensure that you get a good C-arm intraoperative picture without manipulating the patient too much intraoperatively, 
and a gonadal shield is recommended. Planning the approach is also tricky, especially for surgeries like, say, in radial club hand, where unless you take an appropriate incision after the deformity correction, there may be soft tissue stretch and you may land up with wound complications. If you are planning any K-wire or nail entry, you have to see that you are not causing any injury to the growth plate or any damage to the cartilage. And finally, we have some surgeries for congenital limb deficiencies, like a case of tibial hemimalia. If you can look at the preoperative schematic plan, that looks too complex. And these surgeries are correctly said as super surgeries, like the systematic utilitarian procedure for extremity reconstruction. We have super hip, super knee, super ankle surgeries. So if you are attempting and going to plan these surgeries, see that you are doing in a stage procedure, you have a very thorough understanding of anatomy, take help of your colleagues, uh, colleagues from other specialty and do them, not, uh, just, not just take them for granted. So using all these principles, let me quickly tell you how I plan a femoral virus osteotomy for this case of Perthes disease in a seven-year-old male. So well, it's a seven-year-old child with good hip range of motion, the X-ray shows early fragmentation and lateral pill classification, the height is maintained well with early extrusion. So this is a correct candidate. My surgical dose would be a containment surgery in the form of VDRO, virus derotation osteotomy. What investigations I do? I will do an abduction internal rotation view to correct the uh, uh, type of osteotomy and the magnitude of osteotomy. I will discuss the plan with the parents. I would plan for a lateral open wedge osteotomy, explain the goal of surgery, need for second surgery for the implant removal and need to follow up till skeletal maturity. Because remember, our results come at the maturity and the game may change as the child grows. So once you've planned your surgery, I do it on a fracture table, use, uh, keep my implants ready, pre-bend plate, put the proximal most screw through the trochanter. If you have planned your work and you work your plan, then you get a good result and a good outcome in this surgery. Technology has advanced. A pre-operative paper planning has been replaced by such 3D models for deformity correction. But the principles remain the same. The decision making is the most important thing. Then comes the incision. And I would say that precision in your decision and incision will take you to a successful outcome. So the case may be challenging like this, just as a case which was shown by Dr. Vikas Agashe. A case of congenital pseudoarthrosis of tibia in a 14-year-old girl with this gross deformity who had never walked in her uh, uh, lifetime on two feet. She was just crawling. But if you have and you think that you can put the jigsaw puzzle right, if you have patients like a spine surgeon, if you keep all your armamentarium ready like a reconstruct arthroplasty surgeon, and if you have a focused vision like an arthroscopy surgeon, I think we can do a good job and make them stand and get a joy and a smile on their face and also on us. Thank you so much.